Welcome to the coffee shop, everybody. This is your host and barista, Eric, and it's a long day in the lab. I've been taking a few days off just answering messages and looking at your screenshots that you've been sending me. So thanks for all of that. Um, I can't answer everybody because some of the things that you're asking about are just way too detailed, but that's okay. Please, I do not want to discourage you from sending you sending me your messages. Uh, the reason I want to know about how you guys are questioning the trades that you're getting into and that you're showing me what kind of setups you're using is because uh, it helps me find any kind of errors in the strategies, okay? And it also allows me to stay in communication with you guys, um, you know, to help you find and confirm that your entries and that the information you're understanding is correct. And with that being said, I want to say that there is a member on TradingView who sent me a message. Uh, his name is right here. His name is Havzenzkhu5HBPM. Okay, that's it. That's his name. All right, so his question was based off of a certain chart, a certain coin pair, a time frame of day, whatever the case may be, but I see what the issue is, and it raised a concern for me that I need to say, uh, you know, something like, you know, when a divergence isn't a divergence, right? And with that being said, I don't want to type the three steps that you do for the divergence trading strategy, uh, but you know you should know it from the previous video. There is a three-step divergence trading strategy that I set up with you guys, and I uh, I implore you, go ahead, take a look at that. Now, um, I'm going to show you a little something that will let you know when price is overbought in your RSI, okay, to give you a... Um, a little confluence that, you know, price uh, that the RSI is turning down and that price is about to drop. And it's simply drawing trend lines on your RSI. Okay. Now, first, let's do the three step uh, RSI divergence trading strategy real quick because I'll show you what was uh, questionable in his trade. All right. So he had a high and I'm sorry, he had a high on his RSI and a lower high on his RSI. All right, you can see that this one is lower than that one. Now, the same candle, he's got a high, but here he's got a higher high. Now, that means price should be what? Price for, should be moving downward. And you expert traders or intermediate traders, hold your horses. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean price is going to be moving down. It simply means that price could also be taking a pause. So what I like to do is at that divergence, I'll take this trend line. I don't need another one. I will take this trend line and I'll drag it out. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. I want to know when Heiken Ashi breaks below this level and I start getting downward momentum. By that, I mean downward volume too, okay? We'll see that in a minute. I'll show you. Now, here's the issue that was wrong with his trade. It's not that he did something wrong. He did everything right, but price still went the wrong way. Like I said, the RSI was facing down. Price went up just like this. Why did price go up? Well, like I keep saying, volume is king, okay? He did identify the divergence. He grabbed his box. He went to the opening of the first candle of the divergence, and he drew a box to the top of the divergence. And as I said, wait for a break to the upside or the downside. This is where expert traders tell me I'm crazy, okay? They're like, hey, the RSI is down. Why am I waiting for a a break to the upside. I should be waiting for a break to the downside. No, you have to wait for either one because if you do not have volume, this is why the bull bear of power void was created. If you do not have volume to the downside, you won't get a break to the downside. Okay. Look at all of this volume to the upside. This is 50 period volume. This is a 50 period moving average. I want them to match because I'm trading off of the 50. And I hope this person is too. If he's trading off of a 28, then this would be a 28, right? So 
We know that volume's to the upside. I'm going to be waiting for a break to the upside, right? So let me take this off. Let me take this down, and I want things to be clean. So we can see that here is my candle that broke to the upside, right? Okay, no problem. Why am I going to take the trade here? Well, my Heiken Ashi says that I have broken the plus 10. My bull bear power void says that I am green. Okay, I'm taking this trade to the upside. So long position. I get in at the close. I go for the swing low. In this case, I am going for the other end of my range. Now, I see something else here. I also see this little move to the downside. I want to be here, just outside of that, just for a little safety, right? Because it could be a trap, you know, you never know. Now, I have my, uh, let me get rid of this. There we go. Now, I have my swing low set. I am not using the RSI formula. Understand this. I am not using the RSI formula. Here is my current high, okay? I can see it. This is my current high. What I'm looking for is the previous high where price came up and made a strong move down. It has to be a, oop, look at that. It has to be a strong move up and a strong move down. This doesn't count because it came up, paused, went up, and it's kind of trickled down. I want a strong move up and a strong move down. Here, strong move up, big candles moving down. This is the level I'm looking for to trade to. So I'm going to mark this just a little bit low right there. Now I'm just looking for my take profit, right? I said, I'm always going to tell you where to take profit. So I entered here. I'm going to do take profit here at that last swing high because it has to be a resistance area. And sure enough, price makes it to that level, gets knocked back down little bit higher and it gets knocked back down and that's it okay this is when a divergence is not a divergence it is a pause in the trend okay so let me take this off and you can see here price went up really strong trickled down up strong again here is your divergence strong move down and then it's trickling up it makes its way okay and basically, overall, this is just price moving, pausing, and moving back to the upside. Then, with all of that force that took place, you now lose force in the bull bear power. Like, you start losing that, that momentum. Okay? Now, remember, in the beginning, I drew this trend line on the uh, RSI. Why did I do that? Look at it. Look here. I'm watching this. I want to see when Heiken Ashi closes below this level, right? Right when I entered, there was a couple of candles later that Heiken Ashi broke through. But I know that it's not going to fall out, okay? It's not going to happen. It's a red candle coming down over a green uh, moving average. Not really worried about it. Now I have a red candle breaking below a red moving average and it's breaking through that trend line, that continuation of the trend line, right? Now I have a concern. If I was still hanging on to this trade, I would get out here at the close of this candle. I would get less, but I would still be safe because at this point, nine times out of 10, price is going to be moving in the opposite direction. And I don't wanna get into how to calculate that move back to the downside, but again, that is simply Look left, right? Let's say that you entered here. Look left for a strong move down. Where is it? Strong move down, strong move down, right here. Strong move down, it gets hit, and it moves back up. Right here at this close, okay? The importance of having these highs and lows set. So this would have been a really nice move. And this trade would have played out like... Look at this, All right? Where does it go? Big time, right down there. Big move, right? Almost 1% on a single move and you catch the whole thing. Done in one day, 
Okay, so haven I hope I answered that question for you. When a divergence is not a divergence, okay, look at your volume and you'll be able to know where your breakout is going to go to, either upside or downside. Also, just as a little trick, you can draw a trend line across your two highs, your divergence highs, draw a line through them in your Heikinashi algo, and then wait for a break to the downside of a red candle with a red moving average, okay? That's when you start looking for short positions, okay? And where do you take profit? Look left, look left, look left. For your hard moves that are V tops and V bottoms, I'll do a video in a little while talking about what are V tops and V bottoms, okay? So thanks everyone, hope you enjoyed that one. Hope that it was informative for you, peace.